So check this out. I'm about to show you how to make uh, pure capsaicin oil. I think that's how you say it. If you've ever wondered how like Texas Pete hot sauce has like a regular flavor and then an extra hot or super extra hot, how do they make it super extra hot? This is how, check it out. So here I have some buena mulata, some super chili, some long slim cayennes, and some Thai chili peppers mixed together because that's all I could get. I'd rather do this with long slim chilies, but I don't have enough. So this is what you get. So the first step is to cut all these little green caps off because I don't want to turn my hot sauce brown. It might not affect the flavor, but it will definitely affect the color. If you should have remembered anything from elementary school art class, it's uh, what happens when you mix the primary colors of red, blue, and green. In this instance, when you mix green and red, you get a subtractive color mixture that creates a brownish color, which brown is really a different shade of orange, but not the shade of orange that we're going for for this hot sauce. I don't want doo-doo orange colored hot sauce. All right, so we tear out the scale with this uh, empty cup on there. For some reason, it's reading negative. Let's try, try that again. All right, then we'll add our peppers. All right, so we have uh, three ounces of peppers. I'm gonna take this all natural sea salt I made straight from uh, Indian Beach and then just add 5%, which should be around anywhere between three and a half to 5%. So we'll say 3.3 ounces is enough. There we go, that's enough. I don't like my hot sauce too salty. So I just shake that up, get the salt all around, and blend it up. Just gonna go ahead and create a pepper mash. You want all them seeds in there. The seeds are where the capsaicin comes from. Alright, well I packed the mash all down to the other end and uh the salt will basically keep any harmful bacteria from growing, anything like botulism, anything that will kill you. But lactic acid bacteria can survive anywhere between 3.5 to, uh, well, all the way up to about 5% salt. So as long as I keep it below 5%, the lactic acid bacteria can ferment the sugars. It'll break down the sugars enzymat enzymatically and uh, turn it into lactic acid. That step is crucial for creating... Uh, the uh what do you call the capsaicin oil uh, naturally because there's a chemical way to to pull this stuff out of the seeds but there's also a natural way using lactic acid fermentation if you were to just throw some vinegar in this and then blend it up and emulsify it for like two weeks you wouldn't get the oil and the taste would be different it'd be like a sweet spicy hot sauce whereas this gives you you know when you ferment for i like to do about two weeks and then you'll start to get these little air bubbles that's how you know it's working. And then uh, if mold and stuff grows in there, then I guess you got it contaminated. But it shouldn't with the salt content. It should be fine. Um, I've done this for a couple years. It's always been fine. And uh, yeah, you have to lacto-ferment it to get the capsaicin oil. So I just set that in the counter cabinet, whatever you call this thing, the pantry. And then every day I'll come in here and just twist the cap off to burp because gas will build up CO2 gas as the lactic acid bacteria breaks down the sugars in the peppers and converts it to lactic acid. It releases uh, carbon and oxygen, you know, in the form of CO2 as a byproduct. So if I, you got to burp the lid or basically this thing will just explode. All right, I'd like to say it's magically been two weeks later, but I, uh, I always have a batch of hot sauce getting made. So when one's finished, another one's coming right behind it. What we'll do is take this lid off one-handed and then add some white distilled vinegar, two parts distilled vinegar to one part mash. So if there's like an inch of mash in there, I'll just add two inches of vinegar. There we go. So I'll just go ahead and transfer this vinegar mash into a mason jar and then uh, use a plastic lid because the metal lids, the free ions, ions in the vinegar will cause the metal lids to rust or the iron to oxidize. And I can't forget to add this magnetic stir bar. Then I'll put this thing on my homemade magnetic stir bar, which I know is a little ghetto, but I don't know if you've seen the price on these things. If you want something that mixes like 1400 milliliters or more, you gotta make it your damn self if you don't wanna 
spin an arm and a leg. So there we go. Just turn that on. It's just some neodymium magnets, some bathroom vent fans, and a variable uh, potentimeter on an 8, 120 volts AC. So I'll just let that mix for like two weeks. Every now and then the, the magnet will fall off center and I gotta reset it and just basically turn it off and turn it back on. But let that mix for about two weeks and then you'll see that all the air will get out of it and the capsaicin oil will start to form around the sides. So after a couple of days, uh, this has been sitting for two weeks, you get this blood red colored oil that is pure capsaicin and you can just extract it. And if I had this thing spinning a little faster, I could get more oil out of it. But this is the, it's contaminated, but I can actually get, if I have a smaller pipette, just the raw oil out of there. And this is the spice in the hot sauce. So if I wanna make extra spicy hot sauce or mild hot sauce, like this one, I could take the capsaicin oil out. It'd be like a mild hot sauce. And then the next batch, I'll add this extra capsaicin into it. Now I got an extra hot hot sauce. And uh, there you go. I like my hot sauce just the way it is though. So I'm just gonna leave this in there. And then it looks a little orange or uh, brown colored. But once I turn this off and mix it, mix it up so the capsaicin's you know dispersed out, it'll turn a dark red color. It'll put the color right back into it. Basically, if I extract the capsaicin oil, this will be like an orangish brown color and mild flavored. And then if I added the extra capsaicin into another batch, it would be a dark, rich, dark, rich red color. <coughs> Man, that was spicy. And that's it, pure capsaicin oil made by lacto-fermentation.